Good morning. This is the beginner's yoga class, 10 a.m. We'll be starting in a few minutes. So if you don't have a block, you might want to use a block if you have one. Make sure that it's handy by your side. And if you have a blanket for later on when we come into Shavasana, you might want to um, bring that by you, close by you as well. So if you're all ready to begin, just start out in a cross-legged position so that once we begin, we're already established in that Sukhasana or easy seat. And just let your eyes close and just settle in to your sits bones, closing your eyes. If you need the assistance of your block, you can place the block underneath your sits bones. And then that will help let the knees open out and soften a little bit more so that you don't feel that you're rounding through your back. So just let your knees fall open, sitting on the block if you need to, or you can just stay on your mat. Or you can even use your blanket to lift you up a little bit. So just find wherever that is. And closing your eyes once again. Just let your palms come to rest onto your knees. And we'll just stay here until we're ready to begin our practice. So if you're just joining us now, we're beginning with a seated position, our legs across where we're comfortable, using the guidance of our block or a, a blanket to, or bolster to lift our hips up a little higher so that the knees are able to just open and relax. And then just let your eyes stay closed and start to focus on your breathing. Just let yourself listen to the way your breath travels in and out through the back of your throat. You want to be able to hear an audible sound for the breath. So maybe you're finding that you have a quiet space now within your room where you're practicing, or maybe you're able to stay quiet internally just noticing the outside noises that are kind of in the background, not allowing that to disturb the inner quiet that you're trying to create. And so it's not taking your mind from your practice. Your breath is drawing you inward. And the noises are just background noises that don't interfere. And letting your palms just stay gently relaxed onto the knees. Keep your shoulders down away from the ears. Draw your navel into the back of the spine, making sure that back remains straight. So you don't want to arch through your lower back. And we're going to start by moving the shoulders. So we're going to start one shoulder at a time. Let's take the right shoulder forward, lift it up, roll it back and down. Same shoulder. We're going to move it forward, back and up and down. Just moving your own range of motion one more time and then let that shoulder release down and just take a moment to notice if you feel any difference between the right and the left side so going to the other side now draw the shoulder forward and up roll it back and down and lifting up and taking it back and down Make sure that you're breathing, so as you inhale, let the shoulder move forward, lifting up, and the exhale draws the shoulder back and down. And finishing up one more time, 
and release the shoulder down and just pull both shoulders down away from the ear. See if you can really let them release down, pulling them down towards the rib cage, lengthening through the crown of your head. Take an inhale and with your exhalation, take your chin down to the chest. Keep the back nice and straight, navel pulls in, let the head release down and just relax the shoulders and very slowly we're going to rock the head to the right side. Just take it to where you're comfortable and then slowly bringing the head down as the chin returns to the chest and rocking it gently to the other side and bring it down. Inhale, take it all the way over. Exhale, bring it down. So going side to side. Inhale, over. Exhale down. So as you follow your breath, you're going to notice that the movement of your head is slow so that you're really discovering what's happening in the back of the neck, noticing if there's any tightness, anything that you might feel that's restricting you from going further. Honor that. Don't feel that you have to force through it. Our practice should always be about paying attention to where we are. And just accepting that sometimes the limitations are there that we can really obviously notice. So we have to be mindful of them. And let's finish up taking it all the way over one more time to the left. And once you do, just bring your chin back down towards the chest. Continue to let your head hang and check in with your back. Make sure it's still long. And then raise your chin up towards the parallel to the mat and then let your eyes open. From here, you're going to keep your hands on your knees. You're going to pull your navel into the back of the spine, round your shoulders forward. So feel the lower back really rounding and opening up. Then here, from here, push into your knees and let your chest extend forward, arching your back, look up. So if we're doing a cat and cow movement here while we're seated, round through your back, pull your chin in, open through your lower back. And then let the chest move forward, squeezing your shoulder blades, drawing the shoulders back, head up. And exhale, round through the back, pull the belly in. Inhale, come forward. And exhale, round. I'm going to take it forward one more time. Inhale, arching that back, looking up. And then just come and stack your shoulders right over your hips and bring both hands into prayer position. Lift both arms all the way up to the ceiling, stretch them up, lower the arms forward, and let your palms face towards the front, the wall that's in front of you. Really push through your heels of your hands so that you feel that stretch through your wrist. Take hold of the right hand, fingers with your left hand and pull the fingers towards your elbow or towards your shoulder as that heel of your hand pushes forward. So you're going to deepen through the wrist, stretching here. And then switch sides. The left hand pushes up, reaching, pressing through the left heel of your hand, feeling that stretch through the wrist. And both arms come forward, and then circle your hands in one direction. Keep the fingers spread wide, so feel your fingers actually doing some movement as well. And then circle around opposite direction. And then take your hands and just turn them up. Draw your shoulders down away from the ears. We're going to work on the fingers. So squeeze the fingers into your palms and then shoot them open and squeeze in and shoot them open and squeeze in nice tight fist and open. One more nice tight fist and open. Raise both arms all the way up. You're going to hold the opposite elbows, pull your belly in and extend those arms up, pulling the shoulders back away from the ears. Make sure your navel is drawing into the back of the spine. You're going to keep trying, trying to stretch the elbows to the ceiling and try not to drop your chin down. So pull the shoulders down and just take it as far back as you can and release the arms, taking both hands, one hand on either shoulder. So your right hand on your right shoulder, left hand on left shoulder. And let's circle the elbows in to touch and open them wide and back. Bring them in to touch and open them back and circling around, warming up those shoulders. And the next time they come back, we're going to go the opposite way. So you're going to pull them in, lift them up to the ceiling, and draw them back. Elbows pull in, opening up. So as you're doing this, you might notice something happening in your shoulders. So if your shoulders aren't really accepting this, if it's 
a little bit of a painful experience, then just modify it, go a little smaller with the circles or don't go all the way around. And then finish up, lift the arms, stretch them all the way up and bring your arms out to the side. Let both palms come down to the mat and keep your belly pulled into the back of the spine. Turn your fingers so that they're facing the wall behind you and try not to push into your hands to get your, your spine long. Just use your belly to lift in and up and let your shoulders pull down and just a slight hinge forward. So don't worry about how far you go. You wanna just feel that action. It's a hinging motion from your hips. Only take it to where you can and just try to keep pressing the hands down to the floor. Fingers are facing the wall behind you. Pull your belly in. Nice deep breath in through the nose, out through the nose. And then slowly come back up. Lift both arms all the way up. Inhale. And now we're going to take that same forward fold as you do. Again, you're not rounding the back. Just hinge from your hips. And then just let your hands come down. Don't overreach and start to arch the back. Just let the hands come down. Pull your belly into the back of the spine. And just see if you can hinge a little bit further forward, wherever that range of motion is. Keep pulling the belly into the back of the spine. And we're going to walk the hands all the way over to the right side. So I'm mirroring you just for these first poses here as we're in the seated position. Okay, pull your left buttock down towards the mat so that it doesn't lift up and try to make sure your back stays long. So as you're walking over, try not to hunch through the back and round. Keep that length through the spine. Pull the shoulders away from your ears and pull that left hip away from the rib cage so that you get a little bit of a squeeze and a stretch here into that side body. And lift up and just walk your hands all the way over to the other side. And as you come forward, again, you're not rounding, you're not hunching, you're not dropping your chin. You're extending your chest towards that left side as you push your right hip away from the rib cage. Make sure that you're breathing nice and slow in and out through your nose. And then slowly come back to center and walk your hands back up. And however you can, we're going to find our way into Tadasana Mountain Pose. You're going to end up standing at the very top of your mat. Allow the big toes to come together. So you want your big toes to touch, and you want to allow yourself to just kind of maybe lift the toes, rock forward and back, just to establish the sense of how your feet feel on the mat. Let the arches start to lift as you stop the rocking motion, and then just feeling that lift out from the floor, opening your hips out slightly to the side. So you're feeling your inner thighs engage pulling in as the outer thighs rotate open. The navel pulls into the back of the spine. The arms just stay down alongside you. Continue to keep feeling your belly pulling in. So you want to use that abdominal tightness there. This is called a bandha. So we want to use that bandha. It's called Uddiyata Bandha. So pulling that belly in. And the arms are relaxed alongside you with your palms gently facing towards the thighs so they're away. And just slightly open them so that you feel your shoulders opening and rotating the chest. Draw your tailbone down. Try not to squeeze the chest, uh, push the chest too far out. You just want to feel that little bit of a rotation. Gaze forward to the wall in front of you. Feel the crown of your head extending towards the ceiling. Fingers are reaching to the earth, and you're grounding through all four corners of your feet. Coming right into our mountain pose. If you're comfortable, go back to closing your eyes if you can. And if you feel dizzy closing your eyes, just let them stay open and find a spot or a focus, a focal point on the wall in front of you. And let that be the place that you always look when you're in a, or a pose that you're at the front of your mat. So you're always just gazing and keeping your direct dristy, that's called our focus. Focus is our dristy. So you're keeping it at a spot on the wall in front of you. And then from here, if your eyes are closed, let them open. Turn your palms out to the side. Lift them all the way up. Inhale. Taking a twist, turning to the right, we're going to bring the left arm forward, right arm behind. And lift it up. Inhale. And take your twist the other side. Right arm goes forward, left arm behind. Your exhale. Inhale, lift up. Take your twist again, all the way to the right. Left arm forward, right arm back. And again, lift the arms, take that twist, rotate right arm forward, left arm back. Inhale, lift up, 
And this time, bring your hands into prayer position as you exhale and take your chin down to the chest. And if you're okay with your eyes closed, close the eyes. Link with your breath. Just listen to your breath, noticing you're present here. So we only have this moment. What we've done before has happened. We don't have to worry about it. What's coming in the future, we don't know. So we want to just stay where we are. Present here and now. Let the chin come back level with the mat, opening your eyes. Raise both arms all the way up, taking a forward fold. So we're going to come down, swan dive down. Keep your legs straight and bring your hands wherever they can come onto the shin. You want your heels of the hands not to push into the knees. They should just be below your knees. If you're very flexible, maybe you can come down to the ankles, but you don't want to round your back. So we shouldn't be rounding the back and dropping the head. The back should be a nice straight line. So pull your belly in. You're not arching through the lower back. You're pulling your shoulders back away from the ears. Now from here, inhale, get a little longer, pull those hips back, pull your belly in, and see if you can hinge a little further, just to where your hamstrings allow you to fold. So we're holding here just to give our hamstrings, the back of the leg muscles, this opportunity to just get a little stretch. Your shoulders are pulling back, your belly is coming closer towards your thighs, and it's the same hinging motion that we did earlier, when we were in that seated position, so you're not rounding the back. Pull the hips back, and then from here, arms out to the side, pull your belly in, and with a flat back, raise yourself all the way up. Lift up, bring your hands to press as you look up at your hands. Follow the thumbs down to the chest, bow the head down, chin in, and then fold with a flat back. So we're going to fold again, this time keeping the hands in, and then place your hands wherever they can come onto your leg, your ankles, your shin. Slide up, lengthen your spine, inhale, and fold once again with your exhale. Keep lifting the hips way up. The sit bones are re re reaching up to the ceiling. Legs are staying straight. So if your hands have to stay here to keep your legs straight, that's fine. So try not to bend the knees. And then take the arms out to the side and tee. Hinge from your hips. Lift the arms all the way up. Inhale. Palms come together, exhaling, following the hands down to the chest as your chin bows once again. And just hold here. Close your eyes if you're comfortable. Coming back to mountain pose with a different position of the hands. Hands are now in Anjali Mudra. And you want to just let yourself feel again that you're present. No worries about what happened or what's to come. Stay linked with your breath. So now as we start to move, we're going to come into a lunge. So we're going to lift the chin up, level with the mat. Bring both arms all the way up. Inhale, folding forward, flat back. Swan dive it down. Bend the knees if you need to, to get your hands to touch the mat. Letting that left leg go back. So if you can't lift the leg, just slide it back on your mat. And really get it as far back as you can. You want to push back through that left heel. And then lower the left knee down to the mat and taking both hands right on top of your right thigh. You want to stand up on that left knee and then sink your pelvis down, tuck your tail under and let the hips press forward. So you want to have a 90 degree angle with that right front knee. The left knee is more behind that left hip. So you're not right, the left knee is not directly underneath the hip. So once you push the hip forward, you'll have that left knee more back of the hip. Breathe here, and let's bring both arms all the way back, lift the arms up. If it feels too intense with your arms here, you can stay here with your hands on the thigh, or maybe just bring the arms up, but work on feeling your shoulders pulling down. Wherever you are, the shoulders move down. Breathe here, gaze is slightly upward towards where the wall and the ceiling meet. Toes are flat on your back foot, taking our crescent pose. Bring both hands to prayer down to the center of your heart. And if your hands are on your thighs, we're going to bring them down. And both hands come on either side of your right foot. Curl your back toes. Let that left knee come off the mat. And we're going to release the right foot to meet the left. Switching sides for our lunge. The right leg goes back. Step it back. Slide it back, however you can get it. And keep scooting that heel as far back until you're in that low lunge. Allowing that right knee to lower, left knee stays over the ankle, and the toes come flat on your right foot. 
both hands onto your left thigh as you come up and just lean, come back so that you're standing right on top of that right knee and then start to slip those hips forward. So you're sinking down through your pelvis, tucking your tail under and continuing to gaze up towards where the wall and the ceiling meet. Both shoulders are pulling down. So keeping the hands here, if you'd like, you can bring them up. And keeping the shoulders down, if that's too intense, maybe this is better for you, or maybe you know that this is better for you. So listen to your own body. We always take ourselves to where we can work comfortably and feel good about ourselves, but if we're feeling that we're struggling and it's hard to maintain the alignment of the pose where it's safe, then just modify it. Don't feel that you have to do something that maybe everyone else would be doing or have too much of an expectation of yourself. So bringing your hands together back into prayer if they're up. And now both hands are going to come on either side of your left foot. And then curling your back toes, the right knee lifts, and the right foot comes forward. Slide your hands up the shins as you lengthen. Inhale, and we're going to fold forward as you exhale. Both arms lift out to the side in T. Hinge from your hips. Come all the way up. And as you reach your arms up, look up at your hands. Follow the thumbs down to the center of your heart. And draw your chin to your chest as you return back to your mountain pose with hands in Anjali Mudra. Just take a notice if your heart rate feels like it's slightly increased. So just by doing those lunge, lunge positions, you might notice that you have started to feel a little more energy coming into your body. So let's bring our chin level with the mat. Raise both arms all the way up. Inhale. Folding as you exhale. We're going to step that left leg back again. As we step it back, stay on the ball of your left foot, coming into this time a high lunge. So before we lower the knee down, your right knee stays over the ankle. Sweep your arms back behind you. Squeeze your shoulder blades. So you're starting from this position. Scissor your inner thighs together. Pull your belly in. Hinge from the hips. Slowly come up. So you want to really squeeze your inner thighs together to create the balance. Both arms come up. And if you feel again that your arms coming up is not something that you're able to do, just keep your hands on your hips. You want those hips to stay square facing forward, or if you can, maybe the arms can come here. So option of your arms wherever you feel comfortable. Remember, as you practice, you'll start to develop more flex flexibility, more strength, and more confidence in the poses that you come into. Now from here, just bring your hands into prayer. So everyone take your hands in prayer position. You're going to just flatten the back foot down to the mat. So your hips spin out to the left. Check out to make sure your right heel lines up with the instep of your left foot and that right knee is bent. So we transitioned from a high lunge right into a warrior two. Open the arms out in T and gaze down the fingers of your right hand. You want to make sure your shoulders are stacked over the hips. The pelvis is pressing down. The right side of your body is not reaching over the right thigh. So sink down, open those inner thighs outward. Maybe even lift up your right big toe to keep that right knee facing forward. Nice deep breath here. Inhale and exhale through the nose. Reversing our warrior, bring the left hand down to the left leg. Turn the right palm up without changing the lower half of your body. Reach your arm up to the ceiling, stretch it up as high as you can, and then taking a nice lateral stretch, arm goes over the ear, so you don't want to have the arm forward. If this is too intense, just take the hand onto your hip and let your chest lift up, look up towards the ceiling. Breathe here. Sinking down as deep as you can go, trying to keep that right thigh parallel to the mat, and return back to your warrior two, and we're going to straighten the right leg. So preparing for triangle. So right leg is, right heel is still aligned with the instep of your left foot. If you have too much of a stance, you can slide your left foot in a little bit. We're going to not bend the right leg. This leg, this position is a straight leg pose. So you want to pull your right thigh, push it into your right hip, and push your left hip to the back of your mat. Reach out with your right hand, and now you're going to extend the right side of your body over the right thigh. Bring the right hand towards your shin, and take your left hand onto your left hip. Now as you bring the hand to your hip, start to pull the left shoulder up. Roll the left hip to the ceiling, left rib cage to the ceiling, and gaze up. 
and then bring the left arm up. So the left arm should stack over the right. If you find that it can't go up, just keep your left hand on the left hip so that you roll the shoulder open so that when eventually the arm can go up, the shoulder is stacked over the right shoulder. And if you can't look up, just look forward. Try not to drop your head down. Keep pulling that right inner thigh into the hip. And lifting up, you're gonna look down at your right big toe. Pull your belly in and without bending the leg, come up so you're using your core. Bend the right leg at the knee. We're gonna rotate back into that warrior high, uh, high lunge. So do the best you can. Open the shoulders towards the front of the room, then spin onto the left foot, squeezing the inner thighs, just looking for your balance. Breathe here, hands can come on the hips, arms can stay out or up. And then just bring both hands down on either side of your right foot. And you're gonna take that left foot back to meet the right. Inhale, slide your hands up the shins, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, taking your arms all the way out and up, lifting up. Bring your hands to prayer back to the center of your heart, thumbs into the chest, and choosing to bow your head, closing your eyes, open the eyes, whatever, brings you right back to feeling present. And so our practice really is a way to let us stay in the moment, to not worry about what we've done, to just bring us to where we need to be, trying not to create these maybe uh, these expectations that we might not be able to achieve and then we feel that we get disappointed. Remember, you're always on your own journey. Bring your chin back level with the mat, both arms lift, inhale. Exhale and fold. Now this time the right leg is going to go back. You're going to stay on the ball of your right foot. Inner thighs are going to stay together. You're going to take it up into that high lunge. So as you come up, take your arms back first. Push both hips back. Pull your belly in. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Gently hinge from your hips. So create that balance. Bring the arms to the hips out to the side or up, and that left knee stays over the ankle. Breathe here, reaching through the fingertips, gazes up towards where the wall is feeling me. And then what we're gonna do is flatten that right foot. So you're gonna spin that right foot flat to the floor so the toes are angled more to the long side of your mat. Bring your hands into prayer to the chest. Open the arms out in T and look down the fingers of your left hand. So as you're looking down, you want to keep your left knee facing that middle toe and right over your ankle, rooting down to the edge of your right foot. The left heel lines up with the arch of the right foot. Sinking your pelvis down, shoulders stay stacked over your hips. Breathe here. Nice deep inhale and exhale. Let those shoulders stay down. So your drifty, your gaze, your focus is right down the left middle finger. And then right hand comes down to the right leg, left palm turns up. Don't, bend, don't straighten that left leg, keep it bent. As you lift up, start to stretch up. Let that right hand just slide down. Try not to grip the hand onto the leg, pushing that left hip down away from the rib cage to really open in through the left side of your body. Looking up to your inner elbow. And coming back through to warrior two. So from here, the feet are right in the position where they need to be. The heel and the instep are lined up. We're going to straighten the left leg. So you may notice that you don't have control, so you might want to wiggle that right foot in a little closer. But continue to keep the heel to instep alignment. Both legs are straight. Belly pulls in. Try not to arch the back. You want to tuck your tail under. And then pulling that left quadricep, tightening it up, pull it into your left hip so that it kicks into that right hip, sending it to the back of your mat. And reach and extend out over that left leg as the hand comes to the shin. Bring your right hand to your right hip, roll the shoulder and hip open, roll the rib cage open, tucking your left buttock under. So you don't want to be pushing your butt out. 
and you don't want your hand to come down to the floor unless you're in that full lateral stretch. So if your butt is out, tuck it under and it'll give you length through the left side and maybe your hand will have to come up more. If it's too much keeping your hand up, your hand can come onto your hip, gaze to the ceiling or forward to the side with the direction your chest is facing. Look down at your left big toe, pulling your belly in, come all the way back up, arms in T. Exhale, bend the left leg. So here comes the challenge for you. Start to rotate onto the ball of your right foot. Take your time. So first take the arms and adjust them so that they're in T as your hips swivel forward, rotate onto the ball of your right foot. Squeeze the inner thighs together. And the left knee is bent, you're in a high lunge. Arms can come up, keep them in T, or hands to the hips. Squeeze both hips to face the front of your mat. And then from here, let both hands come down on either side of your left foot. Bring your right foot forward to meet the left. Slide your hands up the shins, lengthen your spine, inhale. Fold with your exhale. And come all the way up, arms out to the side. Lift up, bring your hands together. Look up at your hands and follow them right down to the center of your heart, chin down, thumbs into your chest, eyes closed, maybe noticing a little more energy flowing through your body. Direct that breath nice and slow into the back of your throat. So maybe as you direct that breath, you can really hear the sound that you should be always able to hear the sounds of your breath traveling through the back of your throat. It lets us know that we are in control of how we're breathing. So let's bring our chin level with the mat. Let the eyes stay open and bring the arms down. So taking a balance now. So first we're going to start with the legs about hip distance apart. We're going to lift the heels off the mat. So draw your navel into the back of the spine. Let your arms come all the way down, stretching through your fingers. And then just raise your heels as high up off the floor as you can. Just let the shoulders pull down away from the ears. Let those heels lift. Just finding balance here. Tailbone down. Holding. Now, just to take, keep lifting those heels, just to take it a little further, arms extend out, stretch through your fingers, keep the shoulders pulled down. Maybe you notice that your feet are a little wobbly, that's fine. Bring both arms all the way up, stretch up to the ceiling. Keep those heels lifted, challenge yourself. Hold, pulling your belly in. Bring both arms back out to the side again. Hold here, reaching through your fingers, and lower both arms all the way down, fingers reach to the floor, heels still stay lifted. So even if you have to bring them down, take them back up. And we're going to lower the heels back down to the mat. Inhale, lift the arms up, exhale, and fold all the way down. And just holding here, we're going to hang here and ragdoll, so bend your legs, let your head drop down, hold to the opposite elbows. Breathe. And just continue to breathe here. And then from here, let your hands just kind of collapse down and rolling yourself up one vertebra at a time. Tuck your tail under, bend the knees. Pull your belly in, let your arms just collapse down. Keep your chin into the chest and roll up one vertebra at a time. So really protecting your back by pulling your belly into the spine. Let the arms just dangle, the head hangs heavy. Straightening your legs as you stack one vertebra on top of the other until finally your tailbone is pushing down. And as you raise your head, the head comes right over. The crown of the head extends to the ceiling and the crown of the head is over your tailbone, back nice and straight. Lift both arms all the way up, inhale, and now fold back down, back down, exhale. Step both legs back, keep your palms flat, both legs back, so right into a high push-up, and then bring your knees down to the floor. And let's take our first child's pose with the big toes connecting, 
separate your knees as wide as the width of the mat and draw your tailbone down towards your heels and extend your arms forward. Let the forehead rest to the mat. If you're not able to let your head come down and you do have your block, rest your forehead on the block. But you want to eventually find that you can get a little bit more flexibility through your hips and your hamstrings that will help bring your forehead a little closer. So with practice, this starts to develop. So be patient with yourself. Nice deep inhale and exhale, pressing the hips down, pushing the tailbone towards the heels and feeling that lower back stretching. So we're going to come back onto the hands and knees now. So bring your palms flat on the mat, slide them in, and make sure that when you stand on your hands and knees, the shoulders are over your palms and your knees are directly underneath your hips. We're going to continue with a balance here. So we're on, a, on our knees. The left leg is going to extend back and point the toes down to the floor. So actually flex that left foot. Take the right arm and extend it alongside your right ear, reaching, stretching through the fingers, and just let that left heel continue to push back. Try not to let it lower too far down. Try to let it stay lifted hip height and breathe here. Hold, nice deep inhale and exhale. Finding that balance. Now we have the option to bend the left leg and reach back with the right hand to hold the top of the foot. If you can't do that, then just keep your leg and your arm extended. Push the heel of your foot away from your butt and lift out of your left hand. So option to stay with your arm and leg extended. That may be challenging enough for you to just try and stay in. And then release your leg. Bring both the hand down and the knee. And we'll switch to the other side, allowing the right leg to extend. Flex the foot. Draw the hip down to the mat. Toes are down, facing down the mat, and your heel is pushing back when you're ready. Let the left arm come up alongside the ear. Keep the crown of your head forward. So don't look to your chest. Don't look down to your chest. Look more to the front of your mat. This will keep the alignment of your crown with your tailbone. And here, option to bend your right leg and reach back to find your foot. Push that foot away from your butt and breathe. So you may find that you have the ability to hold your foot on one side, but maybe the other side is a little more challenging. And remember, it'll eventually come. Be patient. Release if you have that foot, right arm, a uh, right leg and left arm forward, and bring it down back into child's pose. Bring your big toes to touch, drop the tailbone to the heel, reach and extend your arms forward. And again, option to bring your block right under your forehead and just relax. Just listen to your breath. Let everything go. And so from here, coming back up onto all fours, once again, back into tabletop position. Take your hands and walk them as far as you can go to the very top of your mat. So your fingertips are at the top of your mat. We're going to take the legs back. So you're going to push back onto the right ball of your foot, push back onto the left foot, and we're going to just lower the knees and bring the chest down. So as your chest comes down, Slide back so that your forehead or your nose is on the mat, not on your floor. And so you're going to bend your elbows in towards the rib cage. Let your legs come together and all ten toes are pushing down into the floor. Squeeze your glutes together and feel a little tilt, a little pelvic tilt, tuck here. So it's a pelvic tilt or a little tuck under. And then from here, keep the elbows in towards your rib cage. Just start to raise your forehead so you're not taking your head and lifting it from the neck muscles. You're lifting your head simultaneously as you lift your chest. And then start to slide your hands forward so that the elbows come right under your shoulders. And that will help lift your chest. So we come into Sphinx Pose, a little bit of a back bend. And pull that pelvis down. So pressing your pelvis towards the floor, pushing into all ten toes. 
See if you can feel your knees lifting off the floor as you push down into all ten toes. So extending the uh, shoulders away from the ears, pressing down through the toes to allow those glutes to squeeze, letting the chest open. And then start to slowly bring your forehead down. And open the arms out to the side and pull them back in towards your rib cage again. And just relax here, bend both legs at the knees, and then windshield wiper your legs from side to side. So we're going to take it back into that Sphinx pose again, working on the strengthening our back. So bring those legs back down, allow the toes to toe uh, the tops of all ten toenails to push to the floor. Then just start to raise your forehead so it just comes off the mat. You're not crunching into the back of the neck. Lift your head. Then slide your hands forward to let the chest lift. So the hands come forward, the elbows stack right over the shoulders. Chest is open, shoulders back. Make sure that you're squeezing your shoulder blades together, pushing into all ten toes. Let the knees start to lift off the floor. So when you're pushing into your toes, your glutes are squeezing, your knees are lifting, you might, you'll feel your shins coming off the mat, and maybe just the tops of the thighs a little as well. Keep shoulders back away from the ears. And then slowly bring your chest down. Just splay those elbows out as your forehead comes to the mat. And bring both hands down alongside you once again. Your elbows are bent. And palms are flat on the floor. And just breathe here. Bend both legs again at the knees. Windshield wiper from side to side. And then let those legs go back flat to the mat. Now your hands, arms are just on your forearms with your hands close to the front of your mat. Elbows are into the rib cage. Let your elbows start to lift and slide your hands so that they come down to the bottom of your rib cage. Keep the palms flat and the fingers spread wide. Pressing down into all ten toes, start to lift your head again. Squeeze your shoulder blades and now push into your hands as you come onto your knees and bring your knees right under your hips. So your palms should be right over the shoulders. Just take those knees under the hips. And let's work in our standing cat and cow. So curl your toes. Let your tailbone tilt up. Let your chest move forward. Let your head lift. And then let your toes flatten round the back. Pull the belly into the spine. Tuck the chin in last. Curl the toes as you tilt. Lift it up. Inhale. And exhale, flatten the toes. So just getting that back to open up, especially if you felt a little stiffness as you move through that back bend. Anytime that you feel tightness, you want to move in, move your body into where it feels a little bit more open. Last time, curl the toes. And round the back, flatten the toes. And then come into a neutral spine. Just kind of walk your feet. Keep your knees in closer to your wrist, cross your legs behind you, and just sit down onto your buttocks. As you sit up tall here, make sure that your spine is long and the shoulders are down away from the ears. Place your hands onto the tops of your knees and close your eyes and allow yourself to just stay present with your breath. So you should always be present with your breath the whole time, using the breath to help you in the more challenging poses, maybe the breath gets deeper, you can notice that breath, use it to guide you in deeper, use it for the strength that you need. But when we're just sitting here, just let everything go and just connect to the way that the breath flows in and out. Feeling some, somewhat calm and light. And so anytime you're even in those challenging poses, you want to be calm once when you're in them and feel light when you're in them as well. So it takes practice and eventually you get the hang of how to enter into these poses. It becomes like second nature and then you're ready to discover more of the challenging poses. How can I get deeper into these poses? How can I challenge myself a little more? 
So always remember that there's more room to continue to grow. Let's bring the hands, open the eyes and bring the hand, arms all the way up. Inhale. We're going to turn and twist to the right as you exhale the left hand to the right knee and right hand behind you next to your tailbone. Open your chest, roll the shoulders down away from the ears. You want to make sure your back is long. You want to make sure you're not leaning back into that right hand and taking your twist, lowering down. You want to keep the crown of your head right over your tailbone so it's a nice straight line through the spine. And then as you're opening, just re release the chest more to the back of the room. And then just close your eyes for a few breaths. And just establish this space that you, you're here in. Notice how you're feeling while you're in the pose. Not judging it, just accepting it and taking in the space. And then slowly let the eyes open and release out of it coming back to center. Bring both arms all the way up, lift, inhale, taking your twist to the other side so the right hand finds the left knee and the left hand next to your tailbone on the mat. Pull both shoulders down, lengthen up, pulling your belly in, inhale, let the chest rotate more to the back of your mat as well as your chin, but try not to force your chin, try not to stretch it so much that there's a strain in your neck. So you want to feel once again the space and the openness, allowing that energy, the light of the energy to flow through. And then close your eyes and just connect to your breath. You want to still be able to hear your ujjayi breath. And slowly let the eyes open and release, coming back to center. And from here, let's bring both feet forward to the front of your mat. Keep your feet flat on the floor, legs hip distance apart, reach and extend your arms out. Tuck your pelvis, so pull your belly in. As you squeeze your navel into the back of the spine, also squeeze your pelvic floor muscles, so you want to squeeze your belly, your pelvic floor muscles, and you want to draw your chin down to the chest. This is all three bandhas that are working. And just begin to roll down. Take it down nice and slow. Try to place each vertebra down, trying not to collapse, doing the best you can. Keep that tuck, pulling the belly in, rolling down one vertebra at a time until finally the back of your head comes to the floor. And once it does, bring both arms down alongside you. Hug your knees into your chest and rock gently from side to side. Get a nice massage in your lower back. And then allowing the rocking to stop. Let's just take the fingers, interlace them around the shin of your right hand. Flex your right foot and send your left foot just to hover over the mat. Flexing both feet, pull that right thigh in towards the right side of your body. So out to the outside of your rib cage. Pull that, those, that right knee in towards your right shoulder. Using the, uh, the clasped hands to pull into that right shin. Keep that left foot extended and flex the foot. Now let that left leg just relax on the floor, but keep feeling the dynamics in that right leg. Then slide your left foot flat onto the floor so that the knee is bent, and just take your right ankle and place it on top of the left thigh. Lift the left foot off the mat. Pushing the thigh into your right ankle to open your right hip. And now just let the foot come back down to the floor. Keep your belly in. And then lift the foot, pushing a little bit more. So feeling that you're trying to touch your heel towards your chest. And lower the foot back down once again. And lift. Pull the belly into the back of the spine. So you want to squeeze your abdominal muscles. And lower it back down. Keep the belly pulling into the spine. Last time pulling up. And just hold here. So the left leg is doing the work to open your right hip. The arms are staying down. Then lower the left foot down and take your right foot down. And just notice how your right hip feels. And now taking the left knee into the chest, interlace the fingers around the left shin. Pull that left shin 
uh, the left uh, thigh towards the outside of your left rib cage. Straighten the right foot to hover and both feet flex. So your right foot flexes, pushing through the heel. Left foot flexes, pushing through the heel. Pull that left knee in towards your left shoulder. So really feel the dynamics of the right foot stretching forward and the left knee pulling back. Keep your belly pulled in. Feel that stretch. Soften the right leg down, but keep that engagement in that left thigh. Slide the right foot back up. And now place the left ankle just below your left, right knee. Both arms down. Pull your belly into the back of the spine. So here we're using the core strength. So keep squeezing your abdominals. You're going to keep that lower back pushing into the floor by pulling your belly into the spine. Raise the right foot off the mat. Pushing that thigh into your left ankle. Go as far as you can, pulling in, and then let that foot come back down. And then lift it back up. Pulling in a little deeper and slowly lower. Keep that belly in. Don't let the lower back arch. And lift it up again, pulling in. Holding it here a little more, take it a little deeper than you did, but always remember if you're in pain, ease back, don't feel that you have to force it, and then lower that foot down to the floor, and take your left foot back down. Take a notice how your left hip feels, and then bring both knees into your chest, and open your arms out to the side in T position. So keep your lower back pushing into the floor. Squeeze your navel into the back of the spine. Inhale. Exhale. Take your knees over to the right side. And as you do, keep that left shoulder on the floor. Reach your right hand on top of your left knee. Let that left shoulder relax down and look over to the left finger. Breathe where you are. Let that left shoulder relax. And slowly return your head center. Release your right arm. Just your left leg. Bring it up. Pull your belly in. Keep letting that left leg lift. Once you feel that left butt, buttock almost touching, then draw the right leg back up using the strength in your abdominal muscle. Hug in. Rock it again side to side. Preparing for our twist on the other side. So allow the legs to stay together. Arms open in T. Pull your navel into the back of the spine. So your thighs are away from your chest. You want to let the knees go a little further forward to the front of the mat. Inhale, navel in. Exhale, lower the knees to the left side. Let the left knee go down as far as it can come to the mat. Let that left leg and right leg just relax. Reaching your left hand, if you'd like, on top of the right knee. So you don't have to. This is just an added uh, intention and added extension here. So really giving yourself a little bit more of a deeper twist. But if you're fine, just keep the left arm out. And you want that right shoulder to stay down and look over the right finger and close your eyes. And just let go. Create that awareness of space and openness and light. So feeling that lightness in your body even though you're in this twist. Release your left arm back down if you have it on the mat. Squeeze your belly into the back of the spine as your right leg lifts back up. So you're going to keep the foot off the mat. Once that right butt comes down, bring the left leg to meet it. Both knees come into your chest and hug, rock gently side to side. And then bring both feet down to the floor. So let your arms relax down alongside you. Make sure that you feel comfortable. You're in the middle of your mat. And so once you're there, just take the soles of your feet together and let the knees open out to the side. Just place your hands onto the insides of your legs, onto your belly, any place on your body that feels good. Those inner thighs, groin muscles open out. And then close your legs. 
And from here, we'll take our relaxation now. So make sure that you're in the middle of your mat. Take any warm clothing that you need to put on. Put it on right now. You have your blanket. You want to get cozy under the blanket. Go ahead and do that. Try to get those legs to extend straight out. And once you're lying down completely, make sure your legs are hip distance apart. And take your arms so that they open about six or seven inches away from the side of your body. And then just let your shoulder blades draw towards each other. So you're expanding the chest when you squeeze your shoulder blades. Then let the shoulder blades lower back down, continuing to feel the chest open. Close your eyes. And just let go of the Ujjayi breath. So no more controlling of your inhale and exhale as you come into your relaxation. Close your eyes and just let your normal, natural breath resume. No more controlling over your breath. No more working, exerting, putting effort into anything now. So no more effort, no more doing, but more of being. Can you bring yourself into being quiet? So maybe there's a lot of chattering in your mind. If there is, just let your focus be on the natural breath. And when you just start to watch your breathing, hear its subtle sound, you might start to notice that the thoughts kind of dissipate. Maybe they come back again. Don't get frustrated. Just keep doing what you're doing so that you just are, your intention is to just keep those thoughts just away for a little while so that your body has an opportunity to free itself up from those thoughts that kind of bind us a little bit or hold us back. Take this time to really release, let go of any tension and tightness, any of those heavy thoughts, and draw in, send in calm, beautiful light Letting it travel throughout your body. So start wherever you need to. Maybe the crown of your head, descending all the way down to your toes, or maybe start allowing the light to be received from the toes and traveling up. And take as much time as you need to work on every part of your body to feel that light, making you feel more relaxed, invited in, Feel the breath expanding the light, and maybe the exhale pulls it towards another part of your body. And you feel relaxed and peaceful with this whole process. Take as much time as you need, and then when you feel your whole body is melting into this light, just let go.
slowly starting to come back, but don't let go of this open space, this lightness that you feel. Recognize it, experience it now with a little bit more awareness of your body. Recognizing how you feel, just slowly move your fingers and your toes. Taking a nice deep inhale, reach your arms all the way over your head, exhaling out any sigh sounds or moans, and letting everything go, hugging your knees gently into your chest, and rock slowly from side to side. Massage your back, rolling gently to the right side of your mat. As you come to lie on your right arm, making a soft pillow for your head to rest. Let your left hand rest in front of your chest on the floor. And just stay in this fetal position. Be with your stillness. Be with your peace. And slowly with your left hand and your eyes remaining closed, push in and come up gently to a seated position. Legs across, shoulders down, eyes stay closed, heart open. Hands come to prayer, the center of your heart. Taking this moment now just to accept your practice for whatever it was. So always come to your mat with the intention of doing the best you can. This way when you look back at it, you don't have anything to criticize or judge. You did the best you can with the tools you had at that moment, knowing that maybe the next time you'll be able to go a little deeper or find a little more flexibility and strength. And always just take that time to really know that you're making progress, even if you think that it's going backwards at times. Sometimes we need to go backwards in order to move ahead. So we have to really take every step that comes our way and just be patient with ourselves. Know that it's a process. Allow yourself to just continue to stay open. Keep your mind free and clear of judgment. Enjoying this beautiful day, this beautiful practice. And we'll close by drawing the chin down to the chest. If we bow to the light and love, that shines within us. Know that that light and love shines within every one of us. Namaste. And just to let everyone know, we're still continuing with our Monday Level 1 and 2 class, which is at 5.15. Wednesday is at 7 p.m., uh, 5.15 p.m. on Monday and 7 p.m. on Wednesday. And, of course, continuing with our Saturdays. So everyone have a wonderful day, enjoy, and let your practice really shine through.